Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ramble. How's it going? Well, it is Thanksgiving week here in the good old U.S. of A. This Thursday, myself and millions of my fellow Americans will be sitting down at dinner tables and we'll be enjoying turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing and gravy and pumpkin pie and mass-produced cranberry sauce that retains the shape of the can you bought it in even after you shake it out onto the dish like these are things that we hold dear these are parts of our shared cultural tradition of thanksgiving it's one of my favorite holidays it's one of my favorite times of the year and uh there are some other things though as i think about thanksgiving and i think about what the holiday means to me and i sort of look back at things i've done or things that have been important to how i mark thanksgiving throughout my life there are a couple of things that i always associate with thanksgiving that aren't a part of that stereotypical shared cultural experience and those two things are professional wrestling and mystery science theater 3000 now those of you who maybe know me a little better than most or have watched a lot of my youtube stuff you might be saying to yourself but steve doesn't everything sort of remind you of pro wrestling or mystery science theater 3000 touche very true but there are specific reasons why i associate thanksgiving with both pro wrestling and Mystery Science Theater 3000. And I'm going to talk to you in this video about both of those things and why Thanksgiving always puts me in a mood for both. Now you might assume, not incorrectly, that I'm just using this as a flimsy excuse to talk about pro wrestling some more, but I am not alone in associating Thanksgiving with professional wrestling. In fact, traditionally, Thanksgiving was one of the biggest, most important, most anticipated dates in the calendar of many professional wrestling organizations. Going far back into the old golden age of wrestling, the first big supercard, which was promoted by an NWA territory called Jim Crockett Promotions, which eventually became WCW, which was the WWF's major national competition for many years. They promoted a show in 1983 on Thanksgiving, called Starcade, and the idea was that the family has all come together, everybody's in town, and they've eaten, and they've had time to digest their food, because dinner is usually in the early afternoon, and the family's together, and they're looking for something to do. Well, maybe they'd like to see a wrestling show. So you put the wrestling show on, Thanksgiving night, bell time, maybe 7 or 8 o'clock, pack it, make it a big show that's been built up over weeks and months, put on your biggest, most anticipated matches with your biggest stars, and um, make that a focal point of your of your calendar. And it worked for many, many years. So Starcade was sort of the next step in that. It just made sense. If you're going to have a big wrestling show, or sort of the show of shows of the year, put it on Thanksgiving. And for the first several years, for the first five or six years of its existence, Starcade was a Thanksgiving event. Now, I personally was not a wrestling fan in those early years of Starcade. By the time I got to know wrestling well enough to start watching Starcade events on my own, which by that point were being shown on pay-per-view, it had moved from Thanksgiving to Christmas. One of the reasons, one, the main reason why Starcade was shifted from a Thanksgiving event to a Christmas event is because the World Wrestling Federation, the big dog in the yard, the major national wrestling promotion, started showing its own annual Thanksgiving event starting in 1987. And that's the event that I really associate with uh pro wrestling and Thanksgiving, and that's the Survivor Series. And what made the Survivor Series special in the early days was not only that it happened on Thanksgiving and you could order the pay-per-view and watch it with your family uh, on Thanksgiving night, but it was a different format. The format of the Survivor Series in the early years was not just a typical wrestling show where there would be title matches and singles matches and tag team matches and um, the, the sorts of things that, that we're used to seeing when we turn wrestling on TV or nowadays, all of the matches were five-on-five five elimination tag team matches. And there were usually four or five matches on the show, so each match had ten wrestlers in it, which means that almost every wrestler who worked for the company would be on the show. And that was the major draw of the Survivor Series in the early days, because remember, 
1987, when this show first started, there was no such thing as Monday Night Raw. There was no such thing as SmackDown. Nowadays, we wrestling fans have way too much wrestling on TV. Back in 1987, you got an hour or two of syndicated programming. And if you had cable, you got another hour or two a week of that. And most of those matches were just squash matches, were just wrestlers, the big stars coming in and wrestling a bunch of nobodies in two or three minute matches just to show off and get their face on TV and give the announcers an excuse to talk about them and talk about whoever they were supposed to fight at the next big show. So having a show like Survivor Series where everybody was on the show and all the stars were fighting all the other stars in this really unique format, it was really, really special and it really felt exciting. And of course, eventually wrestling changed to the point where now we're inundated with wrestling programming every week. There's a new pay-per-view event every month. They're all pretty much the same. The Survivor Series format has not survived, unfortunately. It's pretty much just another wrestling show, just like the one last month and the one next month. There might be one or two traditional Survivor Series matches on it, but for the most part, it's just another wrestling show. And that's too bad. You know, one of the things that made it fun was that it was so different and that it was a treat and that it was sort of a break of the typical format. Um, just one of the many reasons, along with the incredibly strong grip of nostalgia, that wrestling just doesn't seem as much fun now as it did when I was a kid. Um, but that's what I think of when I think of Thanksgiving. It's one of the first things that pops into my mind when I think of Thanksgiving. Of course, I think of turkey and family and all that stuff. But I also think of pro wrestling and I think of my childhood, my youth as a, a young wrestling fan when I still kind of thought it was real. And I remember the Survivor Series, the Thanksgiving night tradition. I miss that. The other slightly atypical thing that Thanksgiving puts me in mind of, besides professional wrestling, is Mystery Science Theater 3000. And if there are any people watching this who are so unfortunate as to have never seen an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000, I can only urge you, as soon as you're done watching this video, to find an episode of MST3K, as we hip fans call it, online and watch it as soon as possible. It's easy to find. There are tons of episodes uploaded right here on YouTube. The show has been released on DVD in something like two dozen different sets. There are so many episodes available on DVD. Uh, it's available on streaming sites, video streaming sites like Netflix and uh, Amazon Instant Video. It's so easy to find. It's possible you won't like it. It's not for everyone. I've shown it to people who haven't really gotten it or who haven't enjoyed it as much as I have. But if you do get it, if it does happen to be broadcasting on your frequency, it will be one of the funniest, most charming, most wonderful things you've ever seen, as it is for me. I mean, so much of my own sense of humor has been influenced by Mystery Science Theater. It is such an awesome, awesome show. If you've never seen the show, the premise is relatively easy to explain, and if you don't get it after I explain it to you right now, it's explained in the theme song of every single episode. It's a guy who is trapped on a satellite with two robots, and they are forced as part of a mad science experiment to watch really bad movies. And most of the show is watching the bad movie along with the guy and the robots making their smart ass remarks and commentary as the movie plays. You're basically watching a bad movie with three really, really funny people. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, and it, it has shaped not only my sense of humor, but my view of movies. My view of movies as a communal experience, something to be shared with people. And that even a terrible movie shared with others, or even watched on your own but approached with the right mindset can be a wonderful, joyous experience. It's such a great show. It's such a funny show, and I urge you to check it out if you haven't seen it. For several years during its uh, Comedy Central run, one of the great annual events for Mystery Science Theater fans, especially since this was back in the day before the show was readily available on commercially released home video, was their annual Thanksgiving marathon, aka the Turkey Day Marathon. Every year they would show multiple episodes of Mystery Science Theater uh, on Thanksgiving on Comedy Central. It was their 
Thanksgiving Day programming. And often they would even include newly produced uh, bumpers between the episodes. There was one year where Adam West hosted the Turkey Day Marathon. Uh, it was awesome. Oh, and that's another one I missed. That show is no longer on the air, so they're not producing new episodes anymore. But I still watch the old episodes it wound up being on for 10 years, so there are plenty of Mystery Science Theater episodes to watch. There are episodes I still haven't seen yet, which is kind of nice. It's, it's, it's kind of a treasure to know that there are still Mystery Science Theater episodes out there that I haven't seen yet. Um, and boy, Turkey Day was like the day for Mystery Science Theater fans. You sit down in front of the TV and hope that you can make excuses to not hang out with your family <laughs> the maximum amount of time so you can watch as much of the Turkey Day Marathon <laughs> as you possibly can. So now that I've spent these last several minutes talking up how awesome the wrestling and mystery science theater related aspects of Thanksgiving used to be, what's a fella to do this Thanksgiving if he wants to incorporate these things into his Thanksgiving celebration or her Thanksgiving celebration? Thank you very much. Well, you're in luck. Because, like I say, they, they're no longer doing new episodes of Mystery Science Theater, and the Survivor Series is no longer being held on Thanksgiving and isn't quite the same format as it used to be, but you can relive the glory days of both. Because if you are a subscriber to the WWE Network for uh, $10 a month, or actually for the rest of this month it's free for new subscribers, uh, you can go on to the WWE Network and watch any of the old classic Survivor Series shows anytime you want. Or you can find old episodes, old editions of the show that have been uploaded illegally to YouTube that have not been yanked down by the WWE yet. Uh, they're out there to be found. You can find them uh, if you don't feel like subscribing to the network. As for MST3K, I am so thrilled and excited that once again this year they are uh, resurrecting the Turkey Day Marathon as a live streaming event on YouTube, on uh, Shout Factory's YouTube channel. Shout Factory uh, is the current custodian of the home video releases of uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 on their YouTube channel, just like they did on Thanksgiving last year. This year, this Thanksgiving, this Thursday, they are doing a live stream Turkey Day MST3K marathon with uh, new host segments between the episodes uh, hosted by the original host and creator of Mystery Science Theater 3000, Joel, Joel Hodgson, or uh, Joel Robinson, as he was called on the show. So that's going to be awesome. A whole new Turkey Day Marathon, classic MST3K episodes, curated and presented uh, by Joel. It's going to be awesome. I am once again, as in days of yore, looking forward to getting out of Thanksgiving dinner as early as possible so I can race back home and plop my ass in front of the TV and just binge on Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's going to be an awesome Thanksgiving. A little bit of wrestling, a little bit of MST3K, probably a lot of MST3K because the wife enjoys MST3K, not so much on the wrestling, uh, but it's going to be awesome. And you know what? If you want a little more in the way of of smart ass people making fun of bad movies after you watch some MST3K, this week's Stephen Stuffy video, as last year's Thanksgiving Stephen Stuffy video was, is going to be a special episode where myself and Stuffy and Toby Benson will give the mystery science theater treatment to uh, an old. Uh, ephemeral film, a short film, uh, one of those cheesy old uh, Coronet Pictures sort of educational films, uh, about 12 minutes long. We're going to have some fun with it, and uh, I hope you guys will watch that too on this channel on Thursday. But whatever you watch, whatever you do, whatever your tradition is, if you are one of my fellow Americans and you are celebrating Thanksgiving this Thursday, have a happy one. <laughs>